Welcome to Issues and Answers with your host, Diane Kinderwater. Issues and Answers is presented as a public service to inform, educate, and better the lives of New Mexicans. And now, Issues and Answers with your host, Diane Kinderwater. Welcome to the program. I'm Diane Kinderwater. Voter ID, to be or not to be? Well, it's not up to the county clerk's office or the state secretary of state's office. It's up to your state legislature, but voting and elections and having voter ID is very big. Of course, we know there's a big election coming up in November, November 5th. And talking about voter ID is one of the main topics. Now, my guest today is running for Bernalillo County Clerk. It's Clay Pryor, and he's going to tell us all about his wish list, what he hopes for us, what he hopes for the Bernalillo County Clerk's Office, in regards to what people are sending him. And we're gonna ask him his opinion about the importance of voter ID. So we're gonna leave it at voter ID to be or not to be. Again, it's up to the legislature, but it really is up to us because it depends on if we want it, then we vote for representatives who are representing us in the legislature about voter ID. But there's so much more to talk about with Clay Pryor, who is running for Burnley County Clerk's Office. We'll meet him right after this, stay with us. Okay, my guest today is Clay Pryor. He's a Republican running for the Bernalillo County uh, Clerk's Office right here in Albuquerque, and welcome to the program. I understand you are a career politician. Oh, right. Ex exact opposite. <laughs> no. I just wanted to get a laugh out of you. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Did you want me to talk a little bit about my background? Yeah, okay. sure. And I was joking a little bit about uh, voter ID to be or not okay. to be, and you said you could touch upon it, but yes. there is so much more. So yes. I'm going to say... Clay, take okay, it away. So take I it guess, away, Clay Pryor. <laughs> thanks. Uh, well, my background is I'm an Albuquerque native, born and raised here. Going back a little, my grandfather, who served in World War I and World War II, came to New Mexico with the Manhattan Project and brought my mom. And then she moved to Albuquerque after she graduated from high school and married. And here I am. I've been here all my life. Went to um, Valley High School. Grew up in the Valley, the very last house at the end of Candelaria. On the west end, it's not there anymore. It's all part of the Rio Grande Nature Center now. So we had a little, we had tankers. But that's where your roots were. That's where I grew up your most, roots. most of my life. Now they've got trees instead of that. Yes, our, the, there's a lot of wild looking trees. On the left, that was our alfalfa field. And we raised alfalfa, sold it, fed our livestock with it. And I was just working on the little miniature farm, but it kept me busy. And then I had lots of friends in the neighborhood as well. So you're proud of your roots? Oh, your absolutely. Roots. Yeah, I learned so much. But you've done so much more than that. You went to the Robert O. Anderson School of Management. Yes. And you got your MBA from there. Yes. And you've worked in so many things. So we're going to talk about your work experience. And what were those words? Optimization? Oh, yes. And, okay. <laughs> so as I say, take it away and simplify it a little bit oh, for sure. us. Oh, sure. Well, let me uh, tell you, I was poor growing up. We were kind of, I call it, I think of ourselves as tenant farmers or sharecroppers because the owner of the land gave us a discount on rent. We only paid $50 a month as long as we kept it agricultural. And it was a good, I, I never knew I was poor or anything, but I wanted more. And for me, studying hard and, and doing well in school was, was my path. I know people these days that took different paths and they're doing way better off than I am. But, but that was my path. So it led me down a technical path, a technical career path. So I actually first started out by studying biology. Growing up in the Bosque down there, I love biology. I study biology. I want to send a hats off or a, or a thank you to Mr. Gruner in Valley High School. He really influenced me. But I was studying biology even before that on my own. But anyway, I, I ended up getting a job at Hanley Paint Company with my biology degree. <laughs> I figured maybe I should go back to school. <laughs> so I ended up with an MBA from Robert O. Anderson School of Management and got a job in uh, Des Moines, Iowa with IBM. While I was in college in 1978, I met my wife whose family goes way back for centuries in Carnwell. She went to Manzano, we met at UNM, we married, and then so we went to Iowa together for my job with IBM. And we only lasted about a year there mostly because she couldn't stand it. But <laughs> it's cold there. In it's the not winter. New Mexico. It's <laughs> yeah, not it's New not Mexico. New Mexico. And so we came back and I went to work for the state of New Mexico the natural resources and um, um, game and fish departments had one information systems group, which is what I was in. And we did all the computers for both 
departments. And that was an ideal job for me. With, I ha also have a minor in economics, and I emphasize natural resource economics. So this was an ideal. I loved it, but I had to com commute from Albuquerque to Santa Fe. And Sandia reached out to me and offered me more money. Sandia National Sandia Labs? Sandia National okay. Labs. That's right. Way back when I was growing up, there was only one Sandia, but now we got lots of potential Sandia. So Sandia National Labs. And, and what did you do for them? Uh, information systems. Um, so basically, a lot of people think I'm IT, information technology, yeah. but not really. What I'm doing is I'm building systems to help business people do their job. In other words, hopefully make their jobs easier. And so once the system is built, you have to continue to review it and work with your customers, work, work with the people who use it and make sure it continues to meet their needs. And there's always opportunities for improvement. And that's what I did. I understood their business needs and optimized the systems. Optimizing meaning make it better for them, make it more efficient, make it more effective, do the right thing basically for and the how, people using the systems. And you're still working in that? So I retired after 34 years. Um, and when I retired, I decided that I even put on my LinkedIn account that I wanted to um, be, um, I wanted to contribute to society. And I was thinking, you know, Sandia National Labs, we contribute to society big time. But I was thinking- And I'm Game and Fish and all these other yeah. things as well. And I was thinking more on an independent level. And so I am a Republican, and I thought that I could contribute to society by trying to help Republican candidates win. And so I put my information systems background into um, helping Republican candidates with the data they need. So they have their own consultants. I was not a consultant, but I was trying to provide them the data they needed in order to meet the right people and talk to the right people and reach out to the right people to hopefully get elected. And How long have you been doing that? Since I retired in uh, February 2021, let me back up. The first thing I did, I have some software I sell online. So the first thing I did was re revamp that. So probably about nine months later. So it probably would have been around January or of 2022 or December of 2021, I started working with the Republican Party behind the scenes. And I was also curious about- Taking the, numbers, I imagine. Taking numbers yeah. from the Secretary of State's page about yes. voters and all that. Well, and com Or what? Partly, That's just but, what I think. Okay, what? so actually we have, we have a tool available to us as Republicans, and I'm sure the Democrats have a similar tool. It's called GOP Data Center. And what it is is the RNC, Republican National Committee, has done research on every registered voter throughout the country and basically captured data about them. Um, it's called metadata. And data like what? Well, let me give you an example from Google. The last six years I did at Sandia was enterprise search, where I developed systems where you as an employee could type in, just like you do Google, type in some kind of search query and get results back for Sandia documents. The interesting thing about that is you can get results back that have no relevance to you. Relevance means how, how valuable it is to you as a search engine user. So we wanted to personalize those results by gathering data about you. And some of that data could be clicks. What did you click on? And that's a lot of what Google tracks. What websites do you visit? That's a lot of what Google tracks. But we also have, as an employee, we know about more than that about you. And so we try to incorporate that into a search algorithm that will filter out results that are probably not so relevant to you and give you the results that you think are most relevant. Unfortunately, Google and other search engines have kind of abused that and they tend to hide stuff that they don't want you to know. And I've actually demonstrated that in the past. What do you mean? Well, a current, a current example, that, this isn't really hiding, but it's a current example. If, if you were to search for um, Let's say President you, Trump assassination oh. attempt, it might not show you those results, which that would be hiding. But also what they might do is just point you to the Kamala Harris campaign. You know, so they can manipulate behind the scenes what you see. So let's translate that ah, to tab. You yeah. might ask for something and then Google's giving you. They give you, you what they want ooh, you to know. A company recently did that to me. I was looking for a different company and I was surprised there at that. Go. I was shocked at that it could have happened. In the past. I was, was shocked. Yes. And in the past there was other search engines you could go to like Brave or uh, DuckDuckGo, and they wouldn't do that. Uh, it turns out now even they're starting to do that. So you could search for something in uh, Google. During the Olympics, they were showing for just for, I think, uh, for Apple products, oh. what was it, Safari. Oh, yeah, doesn't yeah, that's right. Safari is built into Apple. That's the search tool for Apple products. But it doesn't track. It's set. You remember they if you do. saw the Olympics, they had the little 
flying cameras in the wow. Olympics all the time showing and they would explode because they were sh people would be on their computer and these little flying cameras came with the red <laughs> lights checking what they were doing and they would sh explode saying Safari doesn't track. Oh, but, well, okay. <laughs> okay, so neither here nor there. Okay. You were doing that for Sandia, then yes. you were able to find clicks and what people were searching for. Yes, we captured that and we did oh. machine learning. Machine learning is computer programs that take all that data and pass it through models. A model is a representation of reality. Pass it through models to come up with recommendations that might be better for you than just the base search gotcha. results. Yes. So then you learned how to do that, but then yes. you were saying about helping other candidates, candidates find with, information. Yes, to with help GOP them. Data Center, GOP Data Center, the National Republican uh, Party basically has um, the same concept in gathering data about voters, and I'm sure the Democrats do as well. And so what I could do for candidates is say, well, you want to walk a certain area, and these are the voters that will probably be more likely to listen to you than others. Um, and I don't want to say anything really negative, but it'll sound negative. When you're on a campaign and you don't have a lot of time, you, you don't want to waste that time talking yeah. to people that are just going to argue with you and you'll never be able to convince them. Although there's a chance you might be able to bring them around. But it could take three or four hours. Exactly. You don't okay. have a lot of time and resources. Wow, so th that much sophistication behind the scenes. Built in, yeah, behind the behind scenes. Behind the scenes, yeah. So you did all that, but now you've decided yourself to run for office. Yeah, so prior. another big piece I put into that was the tabulators. You know, there was a whole bunch of concern, do the tabulators manipulate your vote? And as a software developer, I know tell I Tell me about what the tabulators, tabulators are. Tabulators, they count the votes. So when you go in, I'll tell you a little story. When I go in to vote early and I fill out my paper ballot, we do use paper ballots, the thing you drop that ballot in is a tabulator. And when I did that several years ago, while I was still working, I asked the person standing on the right of the tabulator, how do I know that my vote is being counted the way I intended it to be counted? Good, very good. How I just I had a simple question. How do I know that it accepted it? And they go, oh, there's a little, little gauge counter, showing the number. Yeah. Counter, and a ding. counter, counter. Yes, but counter. I never went as far as saying how does you know, yeah. the votes, yeah. how I wanted to. I just wanted to make sure my vote was in there. So you yeah. went a step further. further. How do you know, how can we be guaranteed your vote was how you wanted to exactly. be? Exactly. Okay, so what was the answer? You did hear the ding, right? That was the answer. I dropped the ballot in, it dings. They told you the counter increases. Um, and I said, yes, yes, I heard the ding. <laughs> but how do I know that it's actually, my vote's actually being counted the way I intended? And the, the guy on the left said, you can't know. So that actually seemed like an honest answer, but it's not. Well, technically it's an honest answer in the sense that I cannot look up to see how my specific vote was counted, but we can know that the tabulators counted the votes as they were intended because of a post system, post election system check. And basically what that is, is they randomly select precincts to audit. For those selected precincts, they gather all the paper ballots and they hand count all the paper ballots and compare that to the original count that was reported for all the tabulators. Because remember, you could vote at any tabulator and you could be in any precinct. But they select precincts for audit. So you gather, uh, and in our case, I'm with Bernalillo County. And so the Bernalillo County Clerk's Office gathers all the paper ballots from all the tabulators for the selected precincts. Then they manually count them compare that to the original election night count and that ends up as an audit and it gets published and one last second on that <laughs> yes precinct 15 is oh. going to be audited let's say yes yes so they find all the ballots for From that pre precinct yes. but they may be in a tabulator any place in the county exactly and they're able to find those yes. ballots somehow yes for that precinct yes that okay, and then they find the Republican candidate received 2,000 votes, yeah. the Democrat received 3,000. Right, using a hand count of the ballots. And then they see if the machine, okay. And they compare so that to what the machine confidence. originally reported. Yes, absolutely. And, and here's an interesting component of that. According to state legislature, according to state law, like you said, the legislators make the law that we have to follow. According to state but law. But we vote for them. We vote for them, exactly right. And by the way, I'll, go, I'll go on to the side here. 
When people tell me we need to get rid of the machines, I say, you need to get people elected that are willing to get rid of the machines. But it's a whole lot more complicated than that, whether we want to get rid of them or not. But, still. but what do they want if they don't want the machines? Just hand voting? Yeah, you'd end up having to hand vote. And by the way, our elections are not as simple as a foreign country electing a president. Or they just put their stamp. And that's ideal. Stuff. I'd love to do that. But it's one office. We got yeah. multiple offices that vary across precincts. Now, granted, at the precinct level, you could do that, but it would require some analysis as a as a. But you feel confident analyst. in the tabulators? I feel machines. confident in the tabulators because, according to state law, we have to randomly select enough precincts okay. to ensure a 90% probability that if a, to 90%? a detective. I know that sounds Ooh, relatively that seems low. kind of low. 90% probability of detecting a faulty tabulator. But in my mind, that should be enough to deter people who don't want to get caught. Right? Why are you running for county okay. clerk? Okay, so Clayton I wasn't going to run for office. I am not a politician, like you pointed out. No, early you said on. you are, and I was uh, you're joking. I was yeah. kidding. I'm not a politician. I had no intention of running. I just wanted to help Republicans get elected. But the Republican Party of Berlioz County, one of their representatives, um, thought that I might be a good fit for the Berlioz County clerk position. And when they asked me if I would do it, my wife, Michelle, was sitting next to me. I said, no, thank you. <laughs> okay. And then okay. we were driving home. My wife and I were driving home. And she said, now, when you're running for office, if somebody asks you this question, how are you going to answer it? And I said, OK, so you want me to run? Yes. So we prayed about it. And we called back the next day and said, OK, we'll run. I'll run. And now I'm serious about running. Since I made the commitment, I'm working on winning. And I don't care what people say the chances are. I've actually done analysis. I know who I need to reach out to. Ah, you saw the numbers probably in the primary, though. I mean, well, the, traditionally, because there's a lot more re registered Democrats. Yes, right. Neither if they know the policies or not, they are right. registered Democrats, yes. and there's a greater likelihood that a Democrat will win this seat. Yeah, there's probably twice as many Democrats total voting in the primary than Republicans. But remember, and, and no, I could be wrong. You know, some of this is speculation. But the p people who vote in the primaries are pretty much the hardcore, dedicated people from each party. So I believe that I can reach out to Democrats that, that if they look at my qualifications, that I have a good chance of earning their vote. Also, there's a huge number of declined to states, which they don't claim a party and they don't vote in the primary. And I think I can reach a lot Why of Why should anybody vote for you? Democrat, independent, yes. declined to state? Declined to state, or yes. Republicans, why should they vote for Clay so, prior? I believe it's because I have the qualifications to ensure that our voting systems are going to be accurate and transparent, by the way. That's another key component. All this is transparent, so people can get in and see all this. But we could probably come up with better transparency. But also, in terms of the non um, election components of the county clerk's office, which includes the um, basically document management, filing and recording, you're, you're, you're managing documents. That is actually one of the systems that I worked with at Sandia, and that's one of the systems that I interfaced with to provide search results, and they have a tool for providing search results. So I have a technical background, plus I have technical leadership. I led people at Sandia on the technical side to improve these systems. So the bottom line is, you could have a manager, and I've worked with managers. You could have a manager in the county clerk's office. This is basically a manager. I see it as a manager position. I don't see it as just a figurehead. I, I think we should be in there involved and making things happen. And I want to make things happen that serve our customers better. But you could have a manager who's not technically oriented. And in my experience, the managers who manage technical people, but they're not technically oriented, can have wool pulled over their eyes. Yeah. They can be fooled. Exactly. Whereas if you have a technical background, and I always enjoyed working for technical managers because they weren't fooled. So I could just tell them the things as they were. Yeah. And if somebody challenged me based on the facts, good. But if they were a non-technical manager, somebody could challenge me based on trying to manipulate that manager. And, and that was not good. In addition I didn't to like the Bureau of Elections, what is the county yes. clerk's office? Uh, so they do. Uh, Recording Filing and recording deeds of deeds, and... property stuff. One thing that they also do is marriages. Recently, they started um, accepting uh, applications for well, I can't, passports. <laughs> I couldn't think of the name. Passports, surprisingly. 
They accept passport applications now. Because it well. used to be the uh, postal service yes. did that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. Okay. That's a new thing. On my website, on my main page, I actually have a link. What does the Bernalillo County Clerk's Office do? Uh, I'll just mention my website. Sure. Clayprior4nm.com. And I have tons of information there. You go to whatever detail you want. Perhaps there's too much detail. Perhaps there's some things that aren't clear, but please feel free to contact me and ask for clarification. And you have a wish list on yes. your... One of them is ensuring no duplicate absentee ballots yes, yes. are, are mail, generator, mail, yes. which has happened. So tell yes. us about, people can give you a wish list. Yes. Um, and then you said that you're going to evaluate the ideas yes. for feasibility and prioritize yes. them. But yes. you are asking for people's ideas yes. and, uh, and planning. And you say if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I got really geeky there from my experience as a software analyst and Developer. So the idea here is, I told you systems can be improved, no matter what the system is. And the way you do that is you solicit feedback from the users and the customers and other stakeholders. That term means somebody who's impacted yeah. or yeah, influences like the system. Yeah, I like somebody impacted by yes. the stakeholders. So yes. you've gone out and asked. Some yes. Of so these I ideas. put on my on my website. There's an ideas tab, and that's where I'm asking for people to give me ideas. Now, obviously, I don't have any power right now to do anything. But the concept is we take these ideas and we figure out what are the most, how can I, we prioritize them. And we come up with the highest priorities because everybody has limited resources. We sure. won't have unlimited resources sure. to do everything. So we identify what's the more, most important things and then figure out how to get them done. And we include stakeholders. And again, stakeholders, What are some of the things users. that you're hearing a little surprising yeah, to yeah. you? I mean, oh, I, and one oh, of them, yeah. that's where I saw you know, yeah, yeah. people want not the duplicate ballots, and they want yes. to make sure their votes count. Yes. Voter ID. What is your position on voter ID? Okay, so my position on voter ID, I can tell you this. When people register to vote, there's people in the county clerk's office that seek to verify whether they are uh, U.S. citizens or not. So that's the first step. Now, the second step in terms of voter ID, when you come in and you check in at the polling station, you know, um, we have observers. You, you actually have the workers, the poll workers, which anybody can be. I believe you have to be registered to do that, but register with the party, I believe. But we have poll workers that get paid to do it. And it should be equal balance of Republicans, Democrats, and I believe independents. But you also have poll challengers who can, with yeah. limitations, oversee what's going on. But now that we have just our licenses are given yes. to any, any, anybody has our license, they can show that as an idea, but that doesn't mean that they're a U.S. citizen or a citizen of New Mexico. But they don't even show it when they go to vote. So basically, they have lists of eligible voters, and you basically state who you are and your address. So theoretically, somebody could give your name and your address. So yes, that could be a problem. Um, and then also, I think the biggest issue is in the mail-in ballots. And the, the, basically, the absentee ballots, whether they're mailed in or dropped in drop boxes. So the interesting thing about that is they have to be signed and the last four digits of this person who's voting's social security number should be there. They don't have signature verification where they compare the signature to a signature on file. They do not. They do not. But they do have the last four digits of social security number and they verify that those match Why the don't signature they, of the person on file. Why don't they verify a signature? Why don't they do that? Uh, so an interesting concept about that. First of all, I agree with you. In my opinion, we should have signature verification and we should have voter I thought ID. They did. I thought they did. Okay. So I think we should. Oh, and I've already agreed to be a champion for that. I can't make the change, but hopefully I can influence legislators talk about to do it. that and, and talk I about it. I guess I yes. thought when I signed they verify uh, by absentee. The, what they now do is in they person, look at the last do they? Four in digits. person, do they? Um, in person, all they're doing is they're taking your name and address, you know? Not so, verifying any signature. Okay. Yeah. We've got two minutes left. Oh, wow. It went fast. I know. <laughs> Clay Pryor, what would, else would you like to share with the audience about you and what you would like to do? Okay. And the ideas that you've seen. Okay. So another idea that I've seen was some kind of, some kind of fraud alert. You know, like if somebody's doing some kind of transaction on your property, you want to know about it. They already have that. And it's a fraud alert that you can sign up for. I can't tell you the link, but if you go to my webpage, I have, a, I have it there. I have a link there. So you're saying ideas. if you own property in Burlington yes. County? Yes. Some, I guess what they A they're, lien they're, or, or transfer, anything related to your property. You can be the notified. Plat, the plat, the size of it, the plat. That's what I'm looking so for. So anyway. I think it's based on uh, address. 
So you're finding, I guess, what are they saying? People are just moving in to people's properties? So I don't know all the details about why this is an <coughs> issue, but I do know you can sign up and get notified if there's any changes to your title. Ah, gotcha. Yes. The other thing, the duplicate ballot thing, um, I know you probably saw, people probably saw on the news that duplicate ballots went out. And uh, Linda Stover oh, yeah, a mess. basically gave an explanation, and, and she didn't really explain where the, ballot, the duplicate ballots came from. And so I contacted the county clerk's office, and I said, can you tell me how this happened? Where did the duplicates come from? And they were wide open. They explained to you it was their mistake. Linda Stover seemed to imply that it was a uh, vendor mistake. But the county clerk's office, the people I talked to, the staff, said it was their mistake, and they put measures in place to pre not prevent to catch it. And I would say if I was in office, I would try to build quality in. Adjust the process so it's highly unlikely that it will happen. Don't just try to verify after the fact whether it happened or not. You could do both. But I'd rather build quality in to the processes themselves. And anyway, that's the way I have the it. background. Yes, do. that is my background. So and yes. people perhaps didn't even know that could be done. No, and also I don't think they knew about the post-election system check. So I posted on my webpage, we need to do a better job of educating the public on um, how this all works. And interestingly, and I called that one out. And interestingly enough, all of a sudden there was a news article about that. Now what's interesting, again, is the, the article, the news article was a little bit wrong. It said it was before elections, but it was actually what they were doing after the election. Clay so. Pryor, how can people reach you on your site? Um, so claypryor4nm.com, and then there's a contact me page, which has information about how to reach out to me. You're enthusiastic. You've got a <laughs> tremendous background, and I appreciate you accepting the invitation from KCHF TV for being a part of this program. Clay Pryor, who is running for the Bernalillo County Clerk's Office, we've extended invitations to all the candidates and those who have accepted are on our program and are introduced to you, our viewers. Thank you for watching the show. I'm Diane Kinderwater. Make it a great week with your family. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Issues and Answers with your host, Diane Kinderwater, is presented as a public service to inform, educate, and better the lives of New Mexicans. To comment on today's program or to purchase a copy of any Issues and Answers program, visit sunbroadcasting.org or call us at 505-345-1991.